Just give me a second to put ourselves back up to full strength here and make sure everything is running as it should be at this point. Just want to make sure that the stream is up and rolling. So, I do apologize about the internet issues. It's a little bit of a stutter that's been happening at uh, my personal internet for the past few days. So, not a lot I can do about that. But well, we did end up missing the gun round. I do apologize once again. But Revival now going to be sitting at 4 to nothing so far against Vega. And looking very strong to pick up this fifth round as well as they roll themselves in. Already picking up two of the five total kills that are needed to end things. As they work their way in, Latro Lamp and Mirror are going to get the final three left up and running, but not for long as Dobry connects a nice double kill with that spray. He's going to be able to take out both Latro and Lamp, and now it just leaves Mirror as the final player left alive in this matchup here. Not a whole lot that he's going to be able to do, of course, sitting back over here by CT. Immediately going to get shut down by Itzmai when he goes for the peak once again here. And now, once again, this will also take us into a good buy round for the members of Vega. They're now finally sort of maxed out that first gun round. They were going to be a little bit more limited on the utility buy-up, but as we take a look at it once again for these guys now, they're going to have, uh, they're going to have full, you know, they got the mollies this time, they got the smokes to work with, so they have everything they need essentially here from the, uh, Revival at the same time also as this too, because they've established that good economy precedent. And they've also got the two ops in play on the T side, which is a little bit more interesting, but the shifts once again from Vega, not the best here at the beginning of this. They have given up platform control. They're going to move in now. Lacto's going to try to get a little bit more of a momentum push on these guys to come in. It's going to work out great. Him and Kishan I've already picked up two frags. That's going to be Latcher looking for another one. They push Undo back over into that corner as well in order to eliminate him. And JR looking for the Kelly shot. Not going to be able to find it, but Latcher comes in there and shuts him down anyway. So they push them out. But Revival were smart about this, actually. They saw that something like this might have been coming, and they decided to shift themselves over towards the B site. So they're going to be able to... Uh they're going to be able to put themselves. They're going to be able to put themselves back over here onto. Uh, they're going to put themselves onto the B site. Get the plate going down. They're looking for the retake. It's my connects that shot, but I think it goes through the wall and unfortunately won't hit on the JR at the end of the day. He's going to move himself over, connects it back over onto it's my, and then Latcher finds the final kills well. So at the end of the day, we do see Vega coming out on top. They're going to be able to pick up the lead now. Or apologies, they'll be able to pick up the round, and they will take their first point onto the board here against the members of Revival, putting it up, putting it up to one to five. And of course, Revival still having a decent amount of cash left over. Actually, not going to be the greatest, but should be enough for at least for one force up, and that's exactly what they are going to do now. Not really going to have a whole lot of utility sitting behind it on a couple of the players. Fat Out Roka is probably going to be the most well equipped out of all of them. He's got the Tech Nine, the Op, and a full utility stack. Uh, for the rest of these guys, we're looking at some limitations at least on every single player. Undo doesn't have any utility. It's mine looking okay. Uh, Balm does well. Has utility, but he's down to a Galil. You see the trades that come into play here and there because of the choices that they've all individually made, but it's still very much so enough to take a round, and that's what's important at this current point in time. Now these guys are going to push forward. That'll be It's My finding the first entry over here to get himself on the lamp. Finds the first pickup. It's My does take some heat from that. He's down to 14 HP, so that could be an easy trade when the members of Vega do start to come back into the site if they do catch this early enough. But at the same time, look at this flank now that Dobry's trying to line up. Obviously, with him being as loud as he is, Latcher's going to hear that and be able to respond. He picks up the kill there, so now they've got this back into their favor at this point. But the CTs have to get into the site. They're wasting a lot of time. The plant's already well on its way, and they're going to work their way back into the site now, too. They're just trying to find a way, but they're, they're wasting so much time. Finally, Mir finds something, but they're so up close and personal. Kashander doesn't even realize it, and then three kills come out for the T's back to back to back. Latro finding another one here, but now it's just him. Finds that no-scope with the op, but now he's got to run to save this. There's not enough time left, even with the kid. Still doesn't know where Balm is with all that smoke in the site, so he's got to fall back here too. Both should stay alive, and I don't think either are going to look for each other as well here. So give me one second, I just got to type something out in the chat. Alright, sorry about that. Seems some people are still not able to uh, to view this stream, so just had to make sure everybody can still see the action because I believe we are back up now, for the time being at least, and we should hopefully uh, not have any further problems with, with, the, with the cause of it from before. So this will be another eco for the most part from Vega. Again, not really having all that much coming into this round. JR is going to be the most the, the best player in terms of gun power here because he does have that op in play that was tossed over from Latro. Latro as well is still running with a 5-7 armor, so he's got something to work with. But now we're going to have to see as well what the rest of the CTs can do here. As Revival, once again, are going to work their players forward. 
Slowly working for cat control, but JR's ready for this. He's got that up, finds the first one. Gonna get hit back over here too by Fan Out Roka, but still able to survive the encounter. He takes it down, and Revival do have to switch things back up to go for the B site take once again. Latcher realizes this may be happening though, and he actually works himself inside of the tunnel as the take actually happens back over here on B. The plan in a second should be the dead giveaway in case he doesn't already know, but we can see him waiting. Four more players to push up from the tunnels, and now Dobry catching JR. He might have not been as well prepared for this as I originally thought, because now the T's get themselves into a really good position. Because Shander, he's going to push out. He's probably a dead man here. Not a whole lot that he can do to resist this one. That's going to be a little bit overpeaked on his part, but not a whole lot of options left for Vega, so it's not too surprising to see them end up making that choice at the end of the day. And now Vega's last player left alive once again is going to end up being Latro. He's on the run, essentially. Looking to try and scavenge a gun or something that may end up being on the ground here somewhere, but it's going to be a little bit tough to try and spot one because he doesn't really know where Revival's players are and he just can't really afford to take a risk on this. So he's going to have to be very, very cautious with his movements, but as he moves back up there on the cat, once again, thinking that Revival would have pushed back over towards T-Spawn, he's going to give away his life. He dies. No save at all from him. Granted, he only loses the 5-7 armor and that everybody from Vega is going to be able to go for this rebuy anyway, but... Still keeping that in play could have been a good save as that could have saved him quite a bit of money in terms of rebuying the armor and having an upgraded pistol would have helped as well. So Vega once again will buy out here. Uh, the money still not looking all that great in terms of what they have for utility. So this is going to be another bit of a rough one for these guys, but they're still able to put them. They're still able to put themselves up a full rifle, which is what matters. And now for Shander finding that first kill, but the two more are going to be traded out here by the members of Revival as it's mine bomb to find the two entries coming out there. Uh, it is going to be a dead tail giveaway that they're pushing towards the A site, so they don't fully commit out to it just as of yet. I still think they're going to want to go for it because they've already found two kills, only traded back to one, so it's more of a why the heck not situation. Uh, but there was also a lot of rotation this game out here from Vega, and they're going to get aggressive with it too. They're getting baited into this play, but they don't expect it to happen, as we can see. JR and Mir just pick up the two kills right back over here. I thought this was a setup, but that's not the case. They just weren't expecting this push to come out at all. So they were getting set up for this sort of situation, but we're not giving enough time. So Lamp catching another kill back over by the B site too. And Final out Roka try to casually just walks out. Tries to casually, I should say, just walk out and pick up the bomb, but fails miserably at doing so. So Vega are actually going to be able to pick up this round here. Little Revival just kind of getting caught out with their pants down for the most part there. So... Now a second point on the board for Vega, finally, but this is going to be another big key, it's, and it always is with the CT side, is the consistency here and picking up these round scores. If Revival just strike back again and reset their economy, then they're going to be right back to square one for the most part. They're going to have just, you know, the default pistols, not really a whole lot else to work with beyond this, and they're going to really have to sit back and wait, essentially, for another round, and this will give Revival not only just the eighth point here if they pick up this one, but uh, potentially a ninth point as well, depending on how many saves Vega goes for. It could, could just lead up to ten, and that would already be just a great half from Revival there, not leaving a whole lot of room for Vega to do too much else in the second half, and this could upset and bring it into a 1-1 and send us on a map number 3 with Revival stealing away Vega's map choice. So, they take quick control of the B site here. Vega does not do a whole lot to resist it after losing one of their teammates. Lamp's gonna end up falling. Mir's here sitting on top of the boxes. They won't be able to connect the shots onto him, but it's my runs back out. Only he's gonna kill himself, though, and he doesn't really get a whole lot of intel out of this play just as of yet either, so they'll be able to take him down. Kashander comes in, finds another one. He's down low, but there's Dober with the Deagle finding one. Popping back into the tunnels, finds another, and this on top of Fanart Roka's frag has put JR as the final player alive. He's in the site. There's no leaving it now. He's gotta go for this, but he doesn't realize just over there by window. Hasn't even spotted it, and he misses the shot. Oh no, JR. That was probably the worst turn of events he could have asked for, essentially. He puts himself right in between his opponents. He doesn't he doesn't know where they are, but it's the same situation for his opponents towards him. So, a lot of confusion there towards the end of the round, but JR is caught completely off guard by everything that's happening around him. Can't really fault him for it with how chaotic that kill spree was from both sides of, uh, of either of these teams. But at the end of the day, he's going to end up faltering just due to the man advantage there and the fact that they have the two-on-one. And now Revival, again, strike it right back. They pick up their eighth point here and... Vega, they're going to be on another eco route, so don't expect too much from them to come out this time. And if they do, it would be an absolute miracle, but as we can already see, two kills for Dobry, two more being added onto the board here for It's My. We do see one coming out from JR. Well, it's going to be good at least to drop one of these guys, but, you know, they can just eat that kind of thing up there. So this is the garbage round for, this is the garbage round for Revival. That's the free ninth point, but... Now we have to look at the choice here, too, that Vega is making, and that they have decided to go for this buy because of how far they've fallen behind here. So they're, they're not really going to have the full buy effect now. They've got four FAMASs in play, very, very limited amounts of smokes and flashes, even just one HE for the entire team, and no mollies to work with either. So in terms of holding back the push, it's not going to be very well placed. And, uh, of course, this is this is being done in an event to just try to pick up some rounds here. They've let Revival get too far away with a seven-round lead. It's not going to look very good for them in the later portions of this, especially if they can't pick up on the full gun round. They've been having problems even doing that as well, so I think they've just made this choice to try and 
force it up as quickly and as competently as possible as soon as the early option became available, but even this is not going to be looking so good. Thankfully, Mir, he's going to be able to get that stack going with his teammate JR, and they find an opening kill finally over here on a fan out Roka to drop him. Or moving out, Latro finds that kill, but it's traded out very quickly by Undo, so that'll keep things even on the player spectrum for the time being, down to three on each side. Mir does fire option shots, but has to fall back. The question becomes though is that how much have they spotted and where is Revival going to take this because you still have It's My to make a lot of noise back over here just inside of the tunnels too and Lamp might be calling for help right now or at the very least might be calling for somebody to act between middle and that's going to be mirrors so they have to split themselves up this cat take is happening so quietly too JR is now going to spot it pops up finds the first one but he's traded back out and now they've got control of the site with the bomb going down here but actually no look at this the bomb has fallen down so Dobry's going to find a way back up to the site can't do it you're not that good at jumping Dobry but just barely scoots his way up. He's definitely going to be able to get the plant, but in terms of clutching this, with the bomb falling down below, that might have just screwed it over because now he's so low. That Molly is going to be doing, going to do a good job of getting in the way of his opponents, but as we can see here, not really doing a whole lot of damage, and immediately Mir is going to be able to dispatch of Dobry to take him out of the picture, and that will be the end of the round. They've still got plenty of time for this defuse despite not having a kit in play. And Vega will find a third round there. So a little bit of a mess up there and a very fortunate turn of events for J for uh, JR, who is sitting back behind. He found the one kill that was traded out, but thankfully he kills the bomb carrier close enough to the ledge that the bomb is going to end up falling down below. And that situation in itself ends up really screwing over Revival's final player. He has to go down, take a big risk, gets himself out into the open. It's amazing that he doesn't die there. So it's good at the very least, considering all those circumstances, they do get the plant. Uh, but that should have gone a lot cleaner, to be completely honest, with what they were working against on the side of Vega. Vega do get lucky there. They do escape. Well, once again, by picking up that third point on a very, very limited rifle buy round. It works out great for them, and now they're going to be able to upgrade it to better rifles here. A couple AKs coming into the picture here. All the Famasas have been upgraded to M4s, and JR now has an op to work with here too. Whereas Revival, they've had to downgrade a little bit. They're back down to the AKs. No op for them for these guys, and three players not even able to buy a single grenade this time, or if they have, it's already been used. And the other two are still basically going to be carrying them in terms of a utility spectrum here. Two smokes. Thankfully, they're going for the B take, and it's going to be a direct one outside the tunnels if they still commit to this. So they won't really require a whole lot of nade coverage. And the one Molly, too. But this can also line itself up to a cat take. They just don't really have a whole lot of options to be clean on the side of rival. They're still going to get closed in upon here. Lamp, although he loses one of his teammates, he is going to trade one back out. But Baldwin is there to trade out that as well. And then Latro doing a little bit more work back over here. It ends up kind of panning itself down to a two versus one. As Latro is going to be left as one of the final players of the live. Tries to work his way through middle, but he's going to hit this volley on the way in. And Fadat Roka is just watching the door for this exact play. So he catches him. And <laughs> again for Vega, very unfortunate as it, they've just been bouncing back and forth this entire CT half so far. Picking up one round, then dropping the one immediately after that and letting Revival pick up another one because they've had to go for the eco. And this exact turn of events is going to be no exception. They have no money, so they have they have no choice. They have to go for an eco. They're going to buy up upon it, of course, with armor, uh, along with a little bit of along with a little bit of utility that they are able to afford. But in the grand scheme of things, it's nothing compared to what Revival have going against them. So if they can upset it here, it's great. They can bounce back. But you need to keep these rounds consistent because they're still not going to have any money to work with here. Vega just cannot maintain the economy on the CT side, and Revival is getting so many free rounds because of this. It, it could potentially end itself, you know, like, if, the worst part is, too, is that they let Revival get so many rounds at the beginning for free. If this was happening consistently, it, would, it wouldn't be the biggest deal because you would be looking at something... You would at least be able to look at like a 10-5 half with both of these teams being a little bit more T-sided teams. You can sort of replicate the same thing going into the second half, but this is not the case right now. This is going to be an 11th pickup from Revival. That would be the second one in the row. Vega can buy again on the 15th, so maybe they'll be able to get a fourth point onto the board, but that's that's only an if. You're still going to be working against even numbers at that point, and you're still going to have to go. You're still going to have to hope that you can find that. So very likely we could just see Revival if they finally come through with uh, with more than two rounds for themselves, and they could have a 12th point going onto the board, and Vega will be extremely far behind. They're have too big of a task to work against. Granted, again, they might be able to swing it back a little bit because they're going to be on their preferred side, just like we saw the last map, but this is almost the same situation that we had happening on Mirage, just with the reverse teams being in the different positions of it. So, Revival just with a huge advantage at this point, and also, they're going to light some of these guys up, and Vega... Interestingly enough, not enough money. I, I was a little bit wrong. I'm calculating the money, so they don't even have enough money to go for a buy here in the final round. They're completely out of cash, and they still have rifles in the mix at this point. They're working with it the most, a deagle, so this probably is going to be a 12th point for Revival, as I thought they would be able to afford it after just going for 1CA, but even they stretched their money out too thinly by going for the by going for the armor buys behind the pistols, and now they've kind of screwed themselves out of going for a big buy round. I don't know why they chose to do that again. I guess because of the fact that it's worked out for them previously on, well, on some of these maps when they've gone for these four-step pistol rounds, but not going to happen here on Dust when your opponent is definitely a little bit more rehearsed on the strategies and the individual skill can come into play a lot more. So that was a bit of a screw up on the side of uh, Vega as now they've locked themselves out of an 11-4 half. Now they're working with a 12-3 half to where 
if Revival just picks up the pistol, they could be at match point just off of that. And if we don't see the second round upset happening. Vega is on the T side now too. So what could be happening here is if they do get the plan on round number one, then Vega could just, you know, they could just save up on the second round. They'll let Revival get up to 14 points and then go for the force. Or apologies, they'll let Vega get up. They'll let Revival get up to 14 points there and then they just try to go for the force there to prevent them from getting 15. But if, uh, if that does not happen then Revival are going to be in a really good spot. But that's also taking a big risk on that 14th round, too. So we'll get to that when we do get to that, though. Is Vega are actually looking fairly good right now, at least in this pistol round. They find two kills to one. It's my having a little bit better luck in the tunnels, but now he's going to be alone to defend this site. Falling back finds one more kill. Might want to run away, though, as there's going to be coming Lamp into the site. He'll be able to take down It's my, and the rest of the CTs are on their way here. They don't commit to the plant just as of yet, as they work their way back in. Undo drops the bomb, falls back in, leaves his teammate out to dry a little bit there. And that's going to be pretty detrimental as both Cassandra and JR, they will be able to pick up those frags and revival, although they do have still a very big lead. We'll have a little bit more work to do before they can close out this map because Vega are going to be able to pick up the pistol and now they can strike back to find a fourth point onto the board here. And of course we'll see the uh, the usual second round response coming out from the CTs this time around. Except one for the upgraded pistols with armor sitting behind it. Not going to be too good for Undo here at the beginning. He spots the player, at least he spots three of these players moving in. The bomb is sitting behind it, so it is going to be a correct yes. But as they move in here, Lamp, finding the first one. A good nade came in to do some decent damage over here to find out Roka as well. She's been dropped down pretty low, but there's going to be Dobry. Takes down Mir. They close it out pretty nicely at this point. We do see some more kills coming out from Vega here too. Rival's only able to find one kill onto Mir, but, you know, again, now they've been basically limited at this point. Vega are falling back. They're probably just going to go for a mid to B split where it can work out a lot better. And JR shutting down one of the final players. It's just Dobry now watching for a cap push. That's not going to happen. And as he drops down, there's JR to find a second one, too. So there's Vega finding a fifth point here. Back into this match. But they're still going to grow that lead as they'll find the six. There's still going to be six more points behind. And that'll be a lot of work to do starting off with the gutter round. And if Revival are able to pick up that gun round there, then they immediately stunt the growth of Vega and will be able to bring themselves right back into this game too. But at least in these rounds specifically, we're not really seeing a whole lot of deaths on the side of Vega. So keeping four players alive is going to develop their own economy. Working into this B site though, it's a little bit of a trap here. Look, the CTs are ready for this one. They're going to start to push back in. Members of Vega thankfully are handling it very well, but still they do get some good damage and taking out two players at the very least. Not going to be enough to really be consistent though for a CT side going against a T side. You really need to get three to four kills to put some impact onto that economy, and Vega will still be able to grow it with three players up to live. So now we get into the first gun round, and we'll see what Revival have to offer us this time. No op buy up coming out from anybody, so it's going to be full M4s across the board. Armor for everybody as well, and actually a little bit limited on the utility because they've chosen to go for the head armor. Um, instead of just going for without that and being able to buy, you know, a couple extra, you know, an extra flashbang or two for the for everybody on the team, which might end up uh, might end up biting them in the butt. To be completely honest, that could have been extra. That could have extra HE or possibly even a Molly too when you look at it like that. So, not, notwithstanding the totals that these guys would have had left in their banks, so that's actually going to hurt them a little bit here because they've got smokes. They've got an okay amount of smokes, but. To hold up something like long for an extended period of time, they're going to need a lot more than that. They just don't have it right now. So this is going to be an easy push for Vega to do. They're not going to be able to limit it at all. They've got the smokes, obviously, so they can smoke off their own angles. But as they work their way in, there's Latro finding one. Lamp's got the location on the second guy. Found out Roka. Will be able to pick up one, but he's traded out. And even JR just working his way over here. He's going to be able to find another kill. So this is a pretty big mistake by Revival. As now they've locked themselves out of this one. They're not able to hold off any of this. So Vega just casually walk onto that A side. They get control of it. And they're finding these kills left and right. Balba is going to be the last one left alive. Looking to see if he can get a save possibly. But not going to happen. Latro shuts him down before he can get himself into a safe position. And Vega will find a 7th point onto the board. Getting very, very close to tying things up. And potentially taking the lead from there. They still have a little bit of work to do. But now they're going to put Revival onto an eco once again, and that could be a free round for them. And their money can build up potentially off of this one too. Like I said, uh, because of the fact that they've, the CTs have been doing an okay amount of damage, killing two or three players, it's not really growing. Uh, it, it grows a little bit on those that survive, obviously. Uh, but for those that have been going down consistently, it's still going to be kept sort of around the 2k margin, which is exactly what we're looking at right now for, you know, three of these guys, or apologies, for, you know, about two to three guys here on the team. 2.5k on JR, 1.3k on Mir, so not necessarily in the ship of shape everybody on Vega just as of yet, but you do have those as well that have the excess, they're able to make up for their teammates, but there's going to be Latro, has to hold off the Alamo here on top behind the barrels, does so with style, three kills, just happening in sequence there, find out Roka does find one with the Deagle to finish off Latro, but that's all they're going to get, and Latro very well earned that death, as he's got 12.6k now, he can rebuy his AK with no trouble whatsoever, and Revival once again now, Well, this is going to be the first real full buy that they get, and... 
What a buy this is, man. Two M4s, two Ops, and an Auto on Balta. So, we'll see what can be worked with this. The utility is a little bit better this time, just in terms of what everybody has brought to the table. Obviously, the uh, the oppers, because they have chosen to go for that. If they were sitting on a little bit lower of an amount, not really going to be able to afford utility. That's to be expected to some degree, but now we see this push coming in. Balbna, here's the auto. He's got to work it, man. There's one. Waiting for more to come back out. There's two. There's three. Shuts them down. And Revival, they've got this round now. JR would have to pull out an absolutely amazing clutch. And that auto, too, it remains secret. Bob doesn't just go crazy and start firing it so that Vega can fall back. They all just waltz right into it in hopes that they can take him down, but that's not the case. The auto does some work. JR's going to look for the upset to try and take him down, but now he's been hit by it a couple times. He's sitting at 39 HP, so as he pops back out, he's a dead man. That's the 4K from Bob off the auto sniper. So now with a play like that, that's definitely they, like I said, they had to be a little bit cheap with it, but they end up uh, they end up keeping themselves in the game with a play such as that. So that's going to allow them to get quite a bit of a lead here once again now. And as I said before as well, Vega, they've got a good amount of stacked money, so they can go for another buy here. The question is how long is it gonna last now? Not that long, maybe one more round after this, but they would be forcing the envelope if they go beyond that in terms of buying out here. So they're gonna look for the response to it. They push their way out. Undo's here with the AK sitting inside a pit. The op as well, a little bit away from this one. But it's still here in generally. And we look at Final Roka now. He's going to rotate in to try and get himself into a good position. We do see Kashander accidentally shooting out one of his teammates there. Takes down Latro with the headshot. But that rotation is going to roll back in. Down to two thieves left alive. Revival have done a good job of it. At the very least finding these trades. And they found one kill for free earlier too. So the final two from Vega are going to try to work something. Lamp gets an op to work with. But they've got to draw a lot of time here to hopefully split up the members of Revival. So that they can make this take happen. Baldwin is sitting in middle. He's going to be the floater. Able to come back in and be a little bit more versatile, rotating where is needed, but it's my nose, it's not B. So that only leaves two options, long or the mid push. And now that it's my is checking out uh, T-spawn, nose is not there, sees nothing in middle, they've got it boxed in now. Big, uh, they've waited a little bit too long, they're slowly making progress, uh, but now the CT should know where it is. I'm actually a little surprised Baldwin hasn't moved in as of yet, because they just checked the tunnel, so they know nothing is there. They didn't check lower, granted, but by process of elimination, you know, it's very unlikely for them to be hiding out here. But what the T's don't expect is in comes It's My. <laughs> He's just going to roll in there with that P90. Nobody was even looking out for the potentiality of a flank on the side of Vega, so Revival are going to be able to really just upset that round. They keep three players alive. They still have the auto in play. They've got a very big, powerful weapon. And for the rest of these guys, they should be able to rebuy the M4s for them. Whereas Vega, as we were saying, they are going to be able to get one more buy going out. Three AKs, the Galil sitting on Amir, and then JR goes for the Deagle buy up. But this will probably be the last one they can afford. And this is basically the GG round that we do survival picking it back up. A little bit of action happening in the tunnels, but nothing that they can't handle, of course. As the members of Vega fall back, they are going to shift this into a quick cat, cat take. And they've got, the, uh, they've got the auto off it right now, so they can make this happen. But they still have to deal with the op if they go for it here, too. As that is going to be fun out, Roka sitting in their way, just sitting up on top of the site right now, waiting for these guys to work their way back into it, but they're playing it nice and slow, not taking any risks on it just as of yet. And they're going to wait to see in case Revival try to get aggressive on them so that they can try to catch that out before the take actually begins. Plenty of time still to play things out from the side of Vega as well. About a minute left on the clock. So these guys can easily just make a choice and go in at any time they would choose here as they've got plenty of time to play with here. But without having any kills, that is going to make it a little bit dangerous. You can even see JR too. Just trying to get a, just trying to get a feel for what's left on either of these sites. Spots Balbna. Knows they're committed deep into sight. I don't know if he spotted the second player, but if he has, this should be the cue for these guys to move forward. And we can see they're slowly starting to make some progress on going in for the site as well. Dobri sitting in there watching out for a long push. Not going to spot any of it just as of yet. But as they creep their way back into here once again, that's going to be the Molly that comes in, forcing the relocation, but there's no... Actually, didn't even force the relocation. I don't believe so. Dover just jumps back and puts himself behind the boxes. So they see this coming. Two kills to none so far as they work their way in. Undo, finding a second for himself. They've even got Lamp back there, too, which Dobry's going to shut down. Latro, way too late on this long push. He's going to find one kill, but that may be the only one he can grab here as everybody else has rotated in. He's going to be alone. He doesn't have bomb control. He's got to fall back. He knows there's only 10 seconds left. This would be futile, so he's got the choice. Die or keep himself alive for this one. So he's going to make the choice to fall back and try to survive here from within inside the long doors. No extra money. If he goes down, big risk, but thankfully everybody's pretty far away from him, so he will be able to save that AK. And with 2,700, he'll have enough left over to... Uh, Love enough left over to uh, go for his own utility buy-ups. Actually, no, he just gives it, he just uh, tosses the AK over to a teammate and decides to uh, buy up another one for himself. 
So very limited one from Vega. Like I said before, they were going to be kind of out of cash after that last force up. So they get the three rifles at the least, but with still two players sitting on pistols, the odds are not looking very good for themselves here. And more than likely, the Revival can just close this out. That Hotto is still in play from Baldwin. He actually hasn't gotten a kill with it in the past like two rounds now, but still here. And there's It's My. He just spraying wildly into the smoke. Catches one. He's getting some fire back, so he knows there's a presence here, but there's the auto baiting him out. It's my using him as the fish bait there. Picks up one more kill with this one. Undo also catching the player in middle. Let's try to catch them off guard. And Balm just kills another with a nade and finds the final one with the auto. So that's gonna be the that's gonna be the gauntlet there to end things on map number two. Revival do take the second map, and they are gonna tie the setup at one to one, guys. So map number three is gonna be coming up here in just a few moments. It's gonna be over on Inferno. So stick around for it, and we'll be right back to figure out who's gonna be taking third place in this tournament. Will it be Vega or Revival? Let us know in the chat, and we'll be right back with map number three in just a few minutes.